Stranded Nigerians boarding the ninth and last evacuation flight from the United States of America as a result of the outbreak of the coronavirus across the world. It is the last flight in the series following the federal government's decision to end all evacuation flights from abroad on August 25th to resume international flights into and out of Nigeria by the end of August. The outbreak of the coronavirus has changed the trajectory of global business and physical interactions since its initial detection in Wuhan, China in December 2019. The World Health Organization's epidemic intelligence began monitoring reports from China in December 2019. It informed its Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network partners about the cluster of pneumonia cases in China by January 2020. All organization member states were informed about the development. After several deliberations, an emergency committee comprising 15 independent experts around the globe had the tax of continuing detailed investigation to advise the WHO Director General, Dr. Tendros Gebrezos. By January 30, 2020, the WHO Director General, following the advice of the committee, declared the coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. There were 98 cases and no death in 18 countries outside China at the time. By March 11, 2020, the United Nations Global Health Body had deducted that the coronavirus could be signalized as a pandemic. Europe became the epicenter with more reported cases and death. I had the honor of addressing an extraordinary meeting of leaders from the G20 countries. My message was threefold. We must fight, unite, and ignite. At this time, governments across the world, including Nigeria, began to take preventive measures against COVID-19. Due to high rate of person-to-person -person transmission of the virus, the travel industry began to suffer hardship. Will-be travelers began cancellation of flights amid health concerns. Airline operators, on the other hand, halted services on major routes. Subsequently, various governments began monitoring the entry of non-citizens or those who travel to the countries with confirmed cases of COVID-19 at the time. On February 27, 2020, Nigeria had its first confirmed case. An Italian citizen tested positive for the virus in Lagos. A Nigerian citizen who had contact with the Italian became the second positive case reported in Ogun State. President Mohamed Buhari directed relevant ministries and agencies to intensify efforts towards protecting Nigerians from the pandemic. 
the federal and state governments began to work assiduously to prevent the spread of the virus across the country. As part of measures to curb the spread, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 was inaugurated with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, as Chairman. The federal government also shut its airspace to international travel on March 23, 2020. Nigerians who traveled out of the country for various reasons got caught in the web of the pandemic. Many countries had also closed their airspace to local and international flights. However, they made provisions to evacuate their stranded citizens in other countries back home. The federal government of Nigeria expressed concern about the plight of Nigerians stranded abroad. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs directed all Nigerian missions to get information across to Nigerians willing to return home to indicate their interest and readiness to bear the cost implication. In response to the directive, many missions began to disseminate the information. Nigerian missions in the United States of America sent out information immediately and began the process of compiling names of those willing to return to Nigeria. The Consul General of Nigeria in New York, Ambassador Ben Okoye, who coordinated the process in the United States with the Consulate General in Atlanta and the Embassy in Washington, D.C., confirmed that many stranded Nigerians in the U.S. completed the registration process and indicated willingness to bear the cost of their movement back to Nigeria. This was a very sensitive assignment at the time it came. Uh, so the first thing I did was to arrange for a meeting of all the Nigerian missions in the United States of America, uh, the Nigerian Embassy in D.C., and that of Atlanta on how best this assignment can be carried out. After the plan, the next thing was for us to issue public notice to Nigerians. So. Yeah, that initial registration gave us almost uh, over 1,000 Nigerians willing to go back to Nigeria. We then saw the compelling need for Nigerians to be evacuated. Then we wrote back to headquarters in Nigeria and that uh, there are actually indeed people who are stranded within this period wanting to go back. Other Nigerian missions in Canada, China and Europe we're also indulging Nigerian citizens trapped in their areas of coverage to ameliorate their plight. On May 10th, 2020, the first set of evacuates, numbering 160, organized by the Consulate General of New York, departed and arrived in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. 160 passengers and eight children were registered for the maiden evacuation flight. A delegation from the Consulate General of Nigeria in New York were present at the Newark Liberty International Airport to bid them farewell. Members of the Association of Nigerian Physicians in America were on hand at the airport to assist with the medical screening process. One of the notable highlights of the airport was the presence of the President of the United Nations General Assembly, Ambassador Tijani Mohamed Bande, who had come to lend his support alongside Nigeria's Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Samson Itekoje. The direct flight arrived in Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, at 11.04 a.m. on Sunday, May 10, 2020. In line with procedures, 
all returnees to the country are transported from the airport to the designated quarantine centers for the mandatory 14-day quarantine period. Following the success of the maiden flight, more Nigerians gained confidence in the ability of the Nigerian government to coordinate more flights to Nigeria. The Consul General of New York, Ambassador Ben Okoye, says the consulate, in collaboration with the Consulate General in Atlanta and the Embassy in Washington, D.C., subsequently coordinated eight more flights to get more Nigerians home. It's an assignment for the United States of America, and it's a sensitive one for Nigeria. We needed, we needed to do it very, very properly. And uh, bearing in mind that uh, we all handle different aspects of uh, different um, states in the United States of America under our jurisdiction, there is then for need for us to come together and pull our energies together and uh, um, sort for these people. And, uh, make all the necessary plan agree on certain indices on how best to go about it so the issue about registration every mission had to register those under their jurisdiction for us to know how many are in atlanta how many are in uh, washington how many are in new york so then at the end of it the the directive that came from headquarters it was very clear, so I coordinated the whole process. But we had to uh, contact the Nigerian community, you know, particularly starting from uh, public notices. You know, it's the Nigerian community that disseminate the information to those who actually need it to be evacuated. And, and uh, apart from that, the NIDO was able to also donate at one point in time face masks in one of these uh, flags. So, to some extent, they show that sympathy, they show that sensitivity to the plight of Nigerians. It was very encouraging. Others also come to the airport, you know, to bid farewell to the Nigerians and uh, was doing one voluntary service or the other because it was a national assignment. They needed to, they, to put their support behind the, the consulate at the time we were doing this. So, it was very useful. The, their support was encouraging. and. Uh, we have always had this good rapport working with the Nigerian community, and that was another point that showed that, yes, we are all together. Tell us a bit about some of the challenges that came up that you were able to overcome, especially with evacuees. Yes, uh, it, it wasn't actually uh, very easy for so many people. Number one was the issue of getting people tested for this flight. Some had a lot of issues in terms of getting where to be tested because they were not showing signs of uh, uh, the virus. Some places were also uh, under, uh, in fact, they were, they were overwhelmed in terms of battling to, to take care of the situation generally in the United States of America. So paying attention to those who want to run, uh, move to back to their country and all that was also an issue for them. They were just doing the general service for everyone. So they were not having any uh, special preference in terms of testing. So it becomes an issue for them. So some tried to come wanting to see if we can just carry them like that. And it wasn't possible for us to do so. People coming to cry, they will leave where their location coming to the airport and only to be told that they cannot fly. They have to have battle back and how to manage themselves. You know, try one, two, three, four times before they can get the testing. You know, some people who came for the first flight couldn't fly, you know, up to the baby, the third one before they, got, they are lucky enough to get there. The other challenge was the issue of the location for Nigeria. So many people are living in different parts of the uh, United States of America and the 50 states, and these flights were taking place in just two locations. That was also an issue for them because they had to think about taking internal flight. And uh, I know of a family who airlines were unable to carry them, you know, uh, to where we are doing this evacuation flight for so many reasons, you know, because they, because of still the same health concerns and all of those kind of stuff. So it wasn't easy. Movement was restricted. It is within this period that we need to do the evacuation flight for Nigerians, for them to transport themselves freely within the United States of America to take undertake this uh, assignment was also an issue. The, the virus who was uh, affecting Nigerians, some people also have health challenges and who were 
we were battling with so many kind of issues within the period. But um, by and large, it was uh, very smooth. We were able to manage all the situation and the Nigerians were happy that we were able to undertake this assignment for them. The Nigeria High Commission in Canada had two flights from Toronto in Ontario, evacuating over 500 stranded passengers back to Nigeria. From the point of view of Nigeria and Canada, I think it was fairly smooth. The initial effort that we tried to do didn't work because Airpeace is not an airline that's authorized to, to fly into Canadian airspace. But the, the two evacuations that we did, once we were using airlines that had approval to fly into Canada, it became fairly straightforward. Um, Canada had fewer evacuations than some of the other countries because we have a much smaller population. The, the population of Canada is 37 million people. The United States is 330 million people. So the Nigerian community in those two countries is reflective of the overall size of the, of the country's populations. So we don't have that many Nigerians that are, who are stranded in, in, in Canada per se. Doing two flights itself was a, a bit of a struggle, whereas in the US, you probably could still doing, continue doing more flights if the need were to arise. The doctors, the nurses, and some volunteers were all Nigerians who, you know, have always been working with us. So it was not difficult to get them mobilized, you know, to support us at that point in time because it was a medical issue, because it is a time where we had a directive clearly from the federal government saying we must not bring anybody that is uh, uh, COVID-19 infected. So the only way we can do that was to involve the medical team. And Nigerians, there are so many doctors out there that are Nigerians in the United States of America. It's a great opportunity to serve, you know, my country, Nigeria, uh, in as much as uh, um, a Nigerian who lives in the United States. Uh, when duty calls, you have to answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, duty called at this time uh, that we should uh, make Nigerians who are here who were stranded with the COVID-19. Uh, to be safe and to make Nigerians back home to be safe as well. So, of course, uh, I had to jump in. Everybody has a role in life, and you people are here doing what you can do. So, what we can do as well is to support you. You will be advised to remain in the city where you are, you are entering, and it is also important for you to obey all the regulation that is uh, put in place on ground in this process of evacuation. It is also important for you to obey all the health regulations uh, on ground. I want to seek your cooperation to do all of this. Thank you very much. As the North America Axis was assisting stranded Nigerians, 
The federal government was also working with Nigerian embassies in China, United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates, marshalling out strategies to evacuate stranded citizens. The Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 did a very good job because whatever we were doing was uh, 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 based on their public protocols, the guidelines they have given to us. It was an excellent leadership coming from the President at this point in time, President Muhammad Buhari, for being very, very sensitive to the plight of Nigerians and the, the PTF that was uh, piloting all of these assignments and uh, the directives we are getting from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs regularly was very helpful in doing all of this. Uh, the, the other end was very okay and uh, there, were, there were a lot of flights coming from different countries and they were able to coordinate all of this as with the protocol put in place, the guidelines. And I think that uh, they need to be commended at this point in time.